We see a lot of Zachary. So now, uh, thank you. It was a tremendous, tremendous fight. Look, look. This, this fight here, you know, the, the, you had the animosity, you had the drama, you had this and that. But what I loved, what I loved at the end of the day, it was a great fight. And most importantly, what you saw was respect. Respect, respect for one another inside the ring after the fight. That's what, what, that's what it's all about. And that's, that's what Danny Garcia is all about. That's what Zab Judah was all about. They showed the world that they're warriors, they're champions, but they're gentlemen, and that's what it's really all about. So, your champ right here, unified, Danny Garcia. Um, first of all, I want to thank God. I want to thank uh, my dad. I want to thank Al Heyman. I want to thank Golden Boy. I want to thank Showtime for giving me this opportunity to shine on this stage. Um, tonight, I prepared for the best Zab Judah. And he, he came his best. I'm happy that he came his best. You know, there's no excuses about anything. But um, I knew when I came to Brooklyn, I had, um, I had a, you know, the hometown guy was gonna have the extra spark because in the hometown, like, I'm not gonna let nobody come in my hometown and just beat me. So he came prepared. It was a great fight. It was blood, sweat, and tears. That's what I bring to the fight. Um, we both landed good shots, um, but I was prepared for, for a war. And, um, you know, I'm just thankful I got the victory, and it's time, time to move on. Let's uh, open it up for questions. Here we go. Um, Danny and Angel, right here. Um, in the sixth and eighth rounds, um, were you surprised that he got up from both of those shots, both of them? Well, yeah, I was. Like, you know, Danny threw some good shots, but I knew his dad was gonna come in his A game. I mean, Zach came to fight. And that's what the fans deserve, fights like this. I mean, you don't come unprepared. Zach came to be the champion tonight. So we knew that. You know, it was a lot of talk back and forth before round five. You know, we knew we had 12 rounds to work with. We knew, I, and I wanted Zach to be in his A game, like I told you before. I wanted Zach to be in his A game, so it would be no excuse. No, no, oh, uh, Danny, quarter buck, watched up, old man, no. Zach was still young, but one thing is that he can't be like the legend. I try to be like the legend, but there's nobody like the legend, man. It's D80. <laughs> 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 Danny? Danny, same question. Um, the first time and then the second time that he kept, he got up from both of those shots. Yeah, actually, I was I was really surprised because I was putting so much pressure and heat on him with like strong, sharp punches, and he was. He came back strong. He even came back strong in the later rounds. He gave me a couple good shots. I sucked him up, but he came prepared. He's been, he's been, he, you know, he's been in big fights like that before. Where he's been hurt before, so I wasn't surprised. I mean, he's a he's a former champion. He's been in tough fights, so I had to I had to adapt and bite down. Remind me a little bit of the Eric Morales fight, the first round. Yeah. Right here. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Right here. Danny. Um, at any moment, it did um, you feel that um, when Zab in the later rounds was hitting you, did you feel that he maybe um, made you wild a little bit? Um, no, he you me, that you started not, backing up. No, he caught me with a good shot. He, he caught me with a good shot. His boxing, that's what it's about. But I, I proved that I can fight even when I'm hurt. I'm a true champion. I bit down and I got the job done. Danny, do you think with your performance tonight, you're still going to get criticized being as though that Zab Judah is the age that he is and people were expecting you to win impressively by knockout and you went the distance with him? I mean, you know, every time I step in the ring, I'm learning. I'm a young fighter. Like I said, they say he's not in his prime, but I'm not in my prime yet either. I'm only 25 years old. That's not my prime. Physical prime is 27, 28. I'm still learning on the job, you know. A win's a win. You know, I heard him. It was blood, it was cuts, and the fans in Brooklyn loved it, and that's why it matters. The thing, he's not washed up. He showed it tonight. He got up from those shots. He got up and went the distance, 12 rounds. So he wasn't washed up. Please, I hope you guys will start saying it. <laughs> he's washed up. Because that would get somebody an L real fast. Like, like Chop Chop would too. 
people need to fight guys like this in shape like this. Old veterans with, with not in shape. Thank you. And congratulations to you guys, Angel. Also, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Danny, on the, on the judges' scorecards, Zab won the last three rounds on all three of them. Looked a little bit like, even though you had a commanding lead, you were fading a little bit. Was it a matter of you feeling like you were getting tired? Or was the, were the punches taken their toll? What was the reason why you were unable to close strong, even though you still were obviously the winner of the fight? No, um, my arms got a little tight in the later rounds. My arms got a little tight. My legs felt good, but my arms felt a little tight. But um, I had I had to bite down and just and just grind it out, and that's what I did. Show you the warrior. It's a warrior sport. I mean, it's a two-way street. You got to take something to get something. And Danny was trying to counter him. And took some good ones to counter, but it didn't work out the way he wanted to do it. That's why I told him go back to your A game. Don't go back to the B game. I also want to ask you about uh, next. Richard uh, Schaefer from Golden Boys talked about putting Danny in with the winner of the May 18th fight between Matisse and Lamont Peterson to sort of uh, continue to unify the titles in the 140 pound weight class. What are your thoughts about that fight uh, and, you know, and doing that in September, which is what they're talking about? You know me, I'll fight anybody. So that's what I'll hear me once. Is that? That's what I do. I do whatever I want. That, that was to happen. It happens. My I mean, job. They, they're supposed to be the best junior weights out there. So what we gonna do? It's 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 something we've discussed. It's something we've discussed amongst the circle there at Golden Boy and with Al and everybody. Daddy's gonna fight the very best, no matter what. No matter what. You you throw in there. Uh, throw him in there with King Kong. He'll fight King Kong. That's who Danny is. So uh, is he gonna fight? Matisse, is he gonna fight the very best at 140 or 147? Hey, that's 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 what we're gonna discuss with everybody. But it, will it happen eventually? Because he wants to fight the best, so that that's who Danny is right now. Had a great fight with Zab Judah. He's gonna relax. We don't know what's gonna happen next, but it, it was discussed as an option. Danny, congratulations on your win tonight, and Angel too. Um, my question is regarding the situation with WBC and WBA. Uh, Jose Suleiman have expressed that he basically wants you to stay with the WBC title and leave the WBA title out. Um, what, what do you think about just leaving the WBA out because he's looking to do the same thing with Canelo? And Canelo expressed to me that he wants to stay with the WBC title after winning the trial. You know, um, like I said before, I'm a fighter. You know, I earned both of these belts, so I walk around with them proud, and every time I step in the ring, I'm proud to defend them. And um, that's that's pretty much what, what I have to say about that. You know, I can't, it's you know, I, don't, I just let them do their job. My job is to fight, so but I love both of us. <laughs> it is what it is. We fight with nobody. It's just about the people, it's not about the belt. It's about the fans, you guys. The fans pay the money to come see a good fight. Just because you got buggers don't mean you can make a good fight. It's two great fighters they can fight. Thank you. Right here, you guys. Danny, right La Mega. What's the call? Leo Dominguez. Um, Trinidad, Cotto, now you. 25 and 0, Puerto Rican. Are you the one holding the Puerto Ricans up right now? Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. Um, of course. You know, I'm the only Puerto Rican champion. Even though I was born and raised in Philadelphia, my mom and dad, they were born, they're born and raised in Puerto Rico. So, you know, I had the Puerto Rican blood, and I got the... It seemed in the, in the arena today, like, it was all Judah in the beginning, then you kind of, like, won the crowd back. Then at the end, they said your name, then Judah came back. I think it was one of the best fights I've seen in a crowd, going crazy like that, yeah. back and forth, in a long time. Yeah, I mean, it that's, was awesome. it, that's what it's all about, you know? The, some fights change momentum. And... The crowds, that's why it's called fans, because they switch. <laughs> fans switch quick, you know how that is, man. But, you know, I'm just happy they, they were into the fight, and, and it was a great fight. This was a, this was a tough fight, but uh, do you feel better that you, you struggled through such a hard fight and uh, came through like this for the first time and had such a hard fight? And no. do you want to fight with Puerto Rico? Oh, yeah, I would love to fight in Puerto Rico. Ask her, how do you fight in Puerto Rico? <laughs> Give me a fight in Puerto Rico. We've, uh, you know, I lived, I lived in Puerto Rico for six years, so, and I'm married to a Puerto Rican, so, whenever I go down there, they're mentioning Danny Garcia, you know, I mean, yeah, he was born here, but, you know, his father, his family, Puerto Rican, so, that would be the plan, absolutely, down the road, to take him to Puerto Rico and go fight at the Choliseo there and sell it out, and people love him, people love him in Puerto Rico, he's the only world champion right now that Puerto Rico has, so 
you know, it, 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 it just makes sense to down the road, down the line, take them to Puerto Rico and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and, and have all the fans there that are very passionate about boxing because boxing is the sport in Puerto Rico and, uh, you know, they want to see Danny Garcia. I mean, everywhere I go and I walk around, oh, what, what fights are you making now? When can we see Danny Garcia? They're asking about him. They're not asking about nobody else. They're asking about Danny. So it's, it, it makes sense to take him down there in the near future. Right here, Danny. Danny, congratulations, first of all. Uh, one question I have for tonight is, uh, do you feel that tonight's fight was part of the education process of your young career? And if so, what adjustments do you feel that you need to make as of right now? You know, as I said before, I'm still learning on the job. Uh, I'm learning every day. I'm getting better. I'm getting smarter. But, um, you know, my division, my division is one of the toughest divisions in boxing. Everybody can fight. So anytime I step in the ring, I know it's going to be, it's going to be a tough fight. So I just got to keep learning and keep adapting. Here we go. Hey, Daddy, I'm going to congratulations. I got to ask you this. You love fighting in other people's backyards. What goes through your mind when you hear thousands of people booing you every time, every time you disappoint them? Um, you know, it, like I said before, it don't matter where I fight. It's just... I'm the king of the ring. That that's my territory. So in that square circle, that I'm the king of that. So, but it, it fuels me, man. It gets me hyped. I like that. I like when people don't want me to win. It makes me, it makes me that much more try to knock them out and hurt them. Danny, uh, you, you spoke about being the king of the ring. I mean, but this is now marks, I believe, your second or third performance here at the Barclays Center. And defeating a Brooklyn native in, in Zab Judah, does this make the Barclays Center your home stadium now? Is this for Danny Garcia? I mean, Philadelphia's right there. Um, yeah, no doubt. Um, I love New York. I love the atmosphere. I love the fans. Mm -hmm. And and you got to, you know, in order to take over somebody's territory, you gotta beat the guy from there. And like I said before the fight, after I beat him, then my name's gonna be SS, Super Swift. <laughs> 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 I beat the homie guy, Brooklyn, so. Danny, do you wanna just tell us about the fight that you had with your sister? Yeah, that's Oh yeah, actually, that was my little sister singing the national anthem earlier. Yeah. Yeah. She's a, she's a twin, so I love Sister Siani. Which one was saying? We didn't want to say it was my sister's because we didn't want to buy the boot on, so we kept it on the low. <laughs> but now y'all know, that's my sister's. <laughs> Okay, Danny Garcia will Thank you very much. And we're uh, Zach Peter on his way, so he will Danny Garcia the champion.